So folks, what I have for you today is old Donnie's biggest embarrassment. We saw yesterday, all day, in a bunch of different ways and venues, him getting absolutely roasted and being mortified. Like, you could really see it get to him. You could see it in his statements, but you could also see it in the reports, like, behind the scenes, like, what's Trump saying? What's he thinking? He's really humiliated by what happened yesterday with the immunity loss and whatnot. But what's happened today as his own team weighs in, people that used to work for him weigh in, and critically, as the Supreme Court makes a move, it's the ultimate humiliation for Trump because it shows that he's being treated as a regular American. Now, that might not sound too bad. You guys are regular Americans, most of the people watching, and you guys are great. There's nothing wrong with being a regular American, but to Trump, who sees himself as a god emperor, it's not good. So watch this. It talks about how bad this is going for Trump and how the ultimate humiliation has happened to him. He doesn't want to be seen as equal to you. He sees himself as a god and you as peasants. He hates you and he hates being seen as equal to you. And that's why this is the ultimate humiliation. Hit the like and subscribe button, guys. Watch this. And there's one moment near the end that's going to get your blood boiling, but, but resist the urge to, to let that anger consume you and channel that anger into the fact that this guy is going to prison. To the source, are, are you surprised that Trump lost here? No, no, it's not surprising what the result is. Uh, I mean, I was a little bit surprised that they ruled it on the merits. I kind of thought that they may uh, go for jurisdiction and just say, you know, this is premature come back to us after the case is over, uh, which would have then really removed the ability to even go to the Supreme Court right now. Uh, so it did surprise me that they went to the merits, but you know, not what the bottom line was. I mean, yeah, they spent a lot of this ruling on the juris jurisdiction, if anyone's reading that. But, but on the merits itself, I mean, Trump is responding to this today by saying the presidency is going to lose power and prestige when the court says it's actually an important check on the presidency if they're not immune uh, he says a president must have full immunity to properly function. They say that's not supported by history or logic, that he was just carrying out his official acts. They say what's alleged is not an official act, that it was instead, they say, true, an unprecedented assault on the structure of our government. If it does go to the Supreme Court, let me ask you what I, what I asked George Conway, which is what argument does his legal team have left? You know, the big thing that I thought that this decision was kind of missing was a more uh, detailed discussion of what the left and right limits would be of immunity. Uh, I think that it kind of gave um, a little bit short shrift to the idea of, you know, when you're out of office that it doesn't uh, doesn't apply anymore. So I think that the Supreme Court could clarify those points. Uh, and one thing to understand is that the Supreme Court doesn't just take cases to overturn them. And, you know, there was a case several years ago in the Clinton administration that the circuit decided an issue of uh, privilege and the um, the Supreme Court decided not to take it. But Justice Ginsburg gave a very strong dissent where she said issues like this that affect, you know, the privileges and immunities related to the presidency is something that should be coming from the Supreme Court, not just from the circuit. And so even if the uh, Supreme Court were to take it and affirm it entirely, it is something because it affects the president that there is you know, a belief that it should come from the Supreme Court, not just the Do circuit. you believe that? Do you think it should go to the Supreme Court after reading this opinion or this ruling today? You know, I, I, I do see a value in, in the Supreme Court uh, weighing in and potentially clarifying, you know, what, you know, what type of conduct would or wouldn't be, uh, you know, under the immunity. I don't think that it's going to affect the outcome. I don't think it's going to change, um, you know, what's going to happen in this trial. Uh, I think that the Supreme Court would have to make that decision really based on on the law and the precedent, uh, whereas a lot of people want to make the decision based on the schedule of getting the trial done before the election. But you're saying you do think the case will ultimately go to trial, even if it does go to the Supreme Court. <laughs> I believe that the Supreme Court is not going to overturn it and find, you know, the blanket immunity that uh, that the former president is asking for. OK, that's I just wanted to make sure that's what you were saying. Uh, 
Oh, you, yeah. you know Trump well. You worked for him. You represented him. There's kind of like a special class for all the attorneys who, who worked for Donald Trump, uh, I think, just based on covering them for so long. Uh, I wonder how you think he read this today. You know, the fact that he lost, that they rejected his arguments, that they referred to him as, as citizen Trump. I mean, how would you predict he's responding to this tonight? I, I mean, I think that he's probably taking it more personally. Um, you know, particularly the parts about citizen Trump. Uh, I think that he's uh, probably more concentrating on that. Uh, but, you know, ultimately, you know, one would hope that his lawyers, and he has some very good lawyers on this particular uh, issue to to try to, you know, refocus it on, you know, just the legal aspects, you know, have, have John Sauer go in and say, you know, th- this is the standard, this is what we need to more focus on than the personal. Tim Parlatori, great to have you. Thanks for joining us tonight. Also, former U.S. attorney and MSNBC contributor Chuck Rosenberg. Chuck, uh, first of all, let's let's talk about the fact how this was a, a unanimous uh, 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 ruling and um, how people were wondering why it was taking so long. Uh, it, talk about how uh, how maybe that delay was was caused by wanting a unanimous uh, a unanimous ruling. Yeah, Joe, well, first of all, from my perspective, having litigated in the courts of appeal, it didn't take all that long. I mean, it was a little bit less than four weeks. Uh, I know that's slow in journalism world. I get that. But I think in lawyer world, that's relatively quick. Second, to your point, the judges wrote um, one opinion, per curiam, meaning for the court, of the court. Mm-hmm. They all joined a single opinion. It's 57 pages long. I read it yesterday. It's thoughtful. It's forceful. And the fact that they were unanimous and of one voice, I think, lends some heft to their opinion. And so taking a little bit more time to get it right, because you know this opinion will be subject to enormous scrutiny, I think is well worth it. So unanimity was important. The forcefulness of the opinion was important. Uh, the fact that it took a little bit longer than folks might have liked, in my view, doesn't matter all that much. Yeah. So uh, for uh, cert to be granted, uh, f- you have, have to have four justices. Is that correct, Chuck? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Uh, four ju- and, and, and I would guess, and, and, and Lisa, uh, Chuck, tell me if I'm wrong. I would guess that the institutionalist in John Roberts is thinking, we want to stay out of politics. We want as little to do with this as possible. We're already handling the Colorado exactly. case. I'm, I'm, I'm curious if you all think that Roberts wants to find uh, the, uh, the six uh, members of the court uh, who will deny cert. Uh, so maybe he's talking to Brett Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett, trying to get that sixth vote to keep Mm -hmm. this away and just affirm the lower court ruling. What do you guys think? I defer to Lisa. Well, one of the things, Joe, that I think is important to point out for our viewers is, yes, it takes four votes to grant cert here, but it takes five votes to grant a stay. And in reality, the stay is the name of the game because that order that accompanied yesterday's decision essentially says Donald Trump has until Monday to file a motion for stay pending the court's review of his cert petition. If he can't get those five votes, even if he has four votes to review it, that also means that without a stay, the Court of Appeals issues its mandate. That's a fancy way of saying it kicks the case back to Judge Chutkin. So Trump could simultaneously get Supreme Court review, but also have pretrial proceedings and allow Judge Chutkin to move forward. That would make the court review in some respects meaningless if she's empowered to forge ahead. This is uh, I'm curious, what are your thoughts if, let's say, Roberts decides he wants to just just uh, uh, affirm uh, the D.C. Circuit uh, ruling? Um, Who is more likely to go his way? Do you think do you think he's 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 talking to Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett uh, to, to, to find uh, that fifth vote to deny uh, to deny stay? Yeah, hard to know for sure, Joe. But but here's my sense of it: the Court of Appeals decision was thoughtful and forceful, and I think solid. And forgive the pun, but unimpeachable. And I think that means that it will not be reviewed ultimately by the Supreme Court, at least not right now. I don't really see a path there. 
Look, the only party who benefits from delay, the only party is Mr. Trump. And so whether he gets five justices for a stay, as Lisa pointed out, or four to grant a petition of certiorari for the Supreme Court to hear the case, that's Mr. Trump's path. And I think whether you're a textualist or an originalist um, or just a thoughtful, smart justice of the Supreme Court, you read the D.C. opinion, it denies absolute immunity. It um, counters the notion that double jeopardy was implicated um, in this case. Uh, and the best thing to do, the smartest thing to do, the lawful thing to do is to send this back to Judge Chutkin and let her try it. I hope it's before the election. I still think it will be. I think that's very much on the table and in the cards. Um, but I think that's the path forward, Joe. So, Donald. So, Andrew, within within your answer that you just gave, uh, there is, I think, in many people's minds, what's the difference between the law and common sense? I mean, you just outlined a pretty common sense response to the decision yesterday that the president or anybody really doesn't have immunity from walking out of his office and killing people and say, hey, no, I'm immune. And so what would the reaction be on a common sense level, do you think, instinctively, among the members of the Supreme Court? Um, so ideally, the law and common sense sense should should be the same. Um, you don't want a situation where the the law is doing something that everyone goes that makes absolutely no sense. Um, I don't think that, with respect to the Supreme Court, that um, Donald Trump will find five votes, um, which is what he needs, five out of the nine, to say that the D.C. Circuit is wrong. There is no precedent at all. You know, everyone likes to talk about how Donald Trump is um, and it's sort of an unprecedented person. But in this situation, in order to prevail, he needs to be able to rely on precedent. That is prior cases, prior law that would support his position. And um, here, the, this decision is really bulletproof. Um, it goes mm -hmm. through dispassionately, one by one, all of his arguments. Um, yes, it's something that I think anyone in grade school would come to the same <laughs> obvious conclusion. Anyone who took a civics class would come to the same conclusion, but it does it in a polite, legal way, going through each argument and refuting each one um, one by one. So if this were anybody else, if it was any other defendant raising this, um, there's not a snowball's chance that that the Supreme Court would take this case. It is it's such a frivolous argument to say that anyone can go ahead and kill people and not be subject to the criminal laws. And the court, by the way, refutes Donald Trump's claim that you just played that, gee, any um, president would be deterred from from you know taking tough positions and says that's historically absolutely not true. Um, there has been no presidential immunity, and guess what? Uh, until Donald Trump, everyone's had no problem making tough decisions, and no one has been charged because no one has committed crimes like this. So, Carlos, to sum this up, um, you've got. More bad news for Donald Trump in the legal realm. I mean, every day something new happens. And these are three judge panels or juries of our peers, not the DOJ. Um, and he's already been found to be a massive fraud. And yet Republicans still keep running around in circles for him and behaving destructively at his whim.